We are here with Chris Bergeron, head coach of the Miami <laughs> Red Hawks. Miami falls three to one in East Lansing today to Michigan State. And coach, you said it's a fun place to play, but a tough place to play. And your team battled hard. What seemed like an evenly played game for a lot of it, giving up the late goal about four minutes to go. What were your thoughts? Yeah, pretty similar to that. Um, didn't have a good first 10 minutes probably, but I, I thought we settled into a, a decent road game. Um, frustrating now because of that one shift that cost in the third period. Third period arguably was our best period. Um, but we, unfortunately, something that, that, that bit us tonight, Tim, is something that's happening pretty consistently every day when we have the puck on our stick and it ends up in our net. And it wasn't one or two plays, it was three or four that we had the puck on our stick and we're looking to make a play and it ends up in our net. And that's, that's the frustrating piece. Something that's been an Achilles heel of ours in practice came and bit us in a game tonight. And, and that's, that's something that that's hard for everybody to swallow because you, you, you want to make those improvements in practice. But you look at that second goal in the third period, we had the puck in our stick a bunch and, and couldn't do anything with it and ended up, ended up in our net, which is what a good team does to you if you give them, you know, three, four or five opportunities. You mentioned that third period probably being the best Miami outshot MSU 14 to eight in the period. And then you had kind of a weird span where both teams had goals disallowed in about 90 seconds or so. What did you see on that? And then kind of just how did your team in your opinion handle the momentum swings of you feel like you give up a goal, turns into a power play, and then you think you got the goal the other way as well. Well, first of all, I thought we handled the momentum swings fine. I, what I saw was a, a, a rush against and it looked like interference to me and, and and so the whistle blew before he shot the puck what I was told by the referee in the second one um, on our disallowed goal was that he blew the whistle and then and then the, our player pushed the goalie and the puck in the net um, that's one of those ones Tim that I like you could challenge but it, he sounded like he was uh, pretty sure that that was the, that that's what happened our guy said the puck ended up in the net our players which the referee agreed to. He just said that we pushed it in there after the goaltender had covered it. Um, I don't think there was any momentum change at all in that situation. I, I, I think they, they, it was a pretty obvious play for them. And, and for us, it, you know, it sounded like the whistle blew. And uh, so I, I think our team got too high or too low. Ultimately, I think we handled it fine. You've mentioned kind of a focus of special teams. They get a goal in the power play. You go over for four. What is it something that you can do going into tomorrow? You're hoping to be able to see uh, the power play break through. Yeah, without watching it, you know, we'll have to watch the video and, and, and make those adjustments. But ultimately, we, we need to be more opportunistic on the power play. It, it, it's I, I don't know how good the looks were. That's where we'll have to refer to the video. Uh, I, I thought their, their power play goal was uh, – everything was going fine and they got a good bounce and, and, and the, and the, you know, the, the kid made a good play to score. Um, so I didn't think it was a total breakdown, but we'll have to watch that. Ultimately we lose the power play battle, the special teams battle. And when you lose the special teams battle more times than not, you lose the game. And, and that's where we find ourselves again tonight. Talk about the play of Joe Cassetti he had a couple goals last year and has already matched that as second goal of the season tonight and what he's been able to do for you score. Well, he, he's, he's somebody that we have uh, pretty high expectations for. Last year was a very difficult year. He sat out the first half of the year, and then he, he got bit by the COVID bug, which a lot of guys did. Um, so this was his first full year where he was healthy, and, and, and we're hoping that he can make an impact. So now it's just a matter of finding a consistent game. Uh, uh, we think his, his top game is pretty good and can make an impact at this level. Uh, he's somebody that, like anybody else, is just trying to – kind of close the gap between his good day and his bad day. Um, our feeling was he had a pretty decent game tonight. He's somebody that, that uh, we, we want to rely on, and, and I think he's progressing and coming along nicely. Miami back in action again at Michigan State tomorrow, 7 p.m. What is your message to your team, either what you said tonight or kind of going into the last part of this weekend? Well, it's pretty typical right now, Tim. The message was let's get out of here and go back and rest and get some food in your belly, and, and we'll – look at the video and, and kind of regroup tomorrow. That's what, that's what we do. Um, it'll be the, uh, a pretty consistent message. We have to take care of the puck better. Um, when the puck is on our stick, so, some of the time bad things are happening and there's absolutely no reason for that. We, we need to clean that up and that'll be something that we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll tell the group tomorrow. 
um, and, 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 you know, just make the, the typical between Friday and Saturday adjustments that we see, uh, hopefully this, this burns a little bit with our people and, and, uh, we'll respond tomorrow with a better effort. Sounds good. Thank you very much, Coach. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it.